Hey guys, Keith from Keatland, and today we're doing a Soxlet extraction process. So look, I've chosen to do coffee beans today. Look, this would be the type of process if you wanted to extract essential oils or something like that. It also shows off how modular the polyphenic still is. And I wanted to show you what I've done to, you know, kind of build this myself. You could basically buy these parts if you wanted to and then build something like this. Or if it's something that you guys are really interested in, we might eventually make some type of dedicated Soxlet extractor kit. But essentially Soxlet extraction is a process where you've got some type of solvent. In this case, I'm using ethanol. Obviously it's food grade and obviously it's available to us. So, um, you know, but you can use lots of other solvents in this process and the polyphenics components are highly chemically resistant, meaning, you know, you won't have any issues uh, with a lot of solvents coming in contact with those PPSU parts. The other thing is we're using the air still today as well. So this air still, rather than having the hassle of using um, water to cool my column down, this particular sock slit extractor is just air, so plug it in, away you go, and it's really simple. Now, you're probably wondering, why would I use the sock slit extraction process and what's it for? And that's a fair question. If you wanted to extract, you know, some flavor out of coffee beans, you can just stick it in a, you know, bath of alcohol. Uh, and that's another thing you can do. But, you know, if I was to do that, as you can imagine, if I have coffee beans sitting in, you know, a container of alcohol, eventually I'm gonna get to a point where that's gonna reach a saturation point. And no more of that coffee oils and stuff like that are gonna come out of the bean. I may have some other products, like let's say I've got some nuts, they're quite difficult. Or even something like, let's say you wanna have oak chips and extract the oak out of there. Some of these products are very slow and difficult to get flavors, oils, and components extracted from the raw material. But the beauty about the Soxlet process is what happens is you would get that solvent, let's say ethanol, into the product, you would carry you know, those flavors and aromas and parts you wanna extract out of it down into the boiler. And then in the boiler, you reboil that, you know, that concentrate. And then what, what happens is the vapor will drive off. So leaving all the um, you know, extraction components behind, oils or whatever it is you're trying to extract, that vapor, that fresh vapor or fresh alcohol would then come up into the still and then re-immerse into all of the components in your, uh, in your column, or in, in this case, in these gin baskets, I've got the coffee beans. So the beauty about that is, you know, when you've got fresh alcohol, which, you know, is leaving all that other oils behind, the fresh alcohol coming up and hitting all these, you know, coffee beans will have a much better job at extracting all of those products out of the, uh, the substrate. So it's a bit like if you were to get a paintbrush and you tried to wash it eventually that paintbrush would essentially, you know, all become saturated and it's very hard to get it any cleaner and extract anything out. However, you could just get fresh alcohol, keep washing the brush, keep washing the brush, keep washing the brush and what brush should be clean. But by that stage, you would end up with a large amount of contaminated alcohol. And potentially what you want to do is make a very concentrated, you know, um, tincture of what you want to extract out of this rather than having a very dilute, huge amount of you know the extract so the sock slip process essentially has a few components to it now i've built this out of stuff we just had available in the warehouse and a lot of it's actually just available on our website so i've got two of the segments here which is holding the coffee beans these have got the gin baskets in there which i filled up with those coffee beans they're the polyphenix gin baskets and as you can see, I've just poured all the coffee beans, filling these two segments. I think it was in the vicinity of like a couple hundred grams of coffee beans. Now, the other thing which is important with the Soxlet process is you've got a tube which allows vapor to get up to the condenser. So I've got vapor from this boiler, comes in here, comes up the side here, and then goes into the top of the column here where it condenses via the air condenser. And as you can see, all the alcohol's gradually dripping down on here. The other thing I've manufactured is a stainless steel blanking plate here, uh, which also has a tube on the underside. So this gradually fills up, but it's connected with this tube on the underside like that. And this liquid fills up in this arm and eventually it fills up inside this tube here. And then once it gets to the top of this tube, as you can see, it will basically fill that and start siphoning back down goes down this tube and then exits back down to the boiler. So it's a little bit like using a bell siphon. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen one of those before, but essentially what happens is the steam comes up, hits the condenser, gradually fills up this chamber, and then 
starts the siphon, the siphon will empty this chamber and that process will continue over and over again. Now I've got this boiler here set on about a thousand watts and I've found with a thousand watts uh, on the boiler, it basically will mean that this head can condense spirit at such a rate that it cycles about once every 20 minutes with fresh alcohol. So each time it cycles, that fresh alcohol is brought into the column and more of that coffee material is left in the boiler, making the coffee in the boiler stronger and stronger and stronger, extracting more as we go. Now for the build of this still, it was relatively straightforward because most of the products are just available off the shelf on our website. However, a couple of them I had to make and modify a little bit. So uh, for instance, just under here, you can see I've got these uh, two stainless steel pieces here. These tubes are actually stainless steel tubes that you can get on our website and essentially they look like this. These are actually the upgrade tubes for our cannula canning machine and we sell them as a pair of two tubes. Now, the lucky thing about this particular diameter firstly is this diameter is quite easy to bend. So I've just basically bent this tube by hand and I've made a shape here. So I've got one which basically ends there and it goes down like this and just bent like that. And another tube which I have from the base here bent in a Z shape like that. So it just Z's up like that. The other nice thing about these tubes is they also suit the bungs really well. So basically I've got these bungs here. These are the polyphenix bung. We normally use this for the temperature probe that goes into the side ports here. But in this instance, I've actually got the tube passing all the way through this bung. Obviously it's got this suitable bore hole size that takes this tube as well. So you can see I've pushed this stainless steel tube through the bore hole here and then it comes and connects to the bottom of this plate here. Now that's the other thing I've made, is just a round stainless steel plate looks like this. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. It's basically just got the U-shaped seal. This U-shaped seal is essentially off um, one of our standard bubble cover plates. I think we do sell them separately as a spare part. Unlike our standard triclover seals, it does have a U-shaped profile, which can fit around a one millimeter thick plate like that pretty well. If it was a 1.5 probably work and if it was a half a mil probably would work too. But you can see that it's just got that U-shaped groove in there so that can fit in there. Now, the other thing is that plate also has a bung on the underside, which you can see here. You can see that bung and that's a sealed bung. So I've got that uh, polyphenix bung sealing from that side. So essentially I've got this here like that, pushed into that hole and it's a 16 millimeter hole through that stainless plate there and it just sealing that tube from the underside there. So uh, just once again, once the liquid gets up to a certain level here, it's just getting high enough uh, very shortly. You can see it's just about to hit this turning point now. And what happens is that liquid will just get past this point, start the siphon, and then you'll see the liquid uh, with the coffee in it starting to go down into the boiler down here. So yeah, that is pretty much how this process works and what you need to do to build it if you wanted to make one of these yourself. One last thing in the setup I'll mention is I did use a power controller as well. So I've got this power controller and I use this to basically turn the power down so my wattage was only about a thousand watts. So that does help because if you use too much power in this unit, you can overwhelm what the air still can handle. So I essentially did that. The same thing would be if you're do using this on a digiboil, you'd also need to use the power controller as well. This bad boy has been running for pretty much an entire day. So around about sort of seven hours. And as you can see, my coffee that I took out of the boiler is quite a bit darker. So gradually throughout the day, it started um, getting quite clear. So look, from that perspective, I know there wasn't really much left in the beans as the alcohol was washing back and forth and almost no color was coming down into the boiler. I've also taken some of these beans out of this uh, you know, gin basket here and I'm actually kind of curious to know what they taste like. So I'm gonna eat a couple of these and they're still a little bit boozy. They had a bit of alcohol on there, but to be honest with you, I, based on that, I can say we've pretty much collected everything like that bean honestly when i'm chewing it it tastes like i'm chewing just a piece of wood with almost no flavor in at all so i can say the process is very efficient extracting all of that coffee aroma and flavor out of these beans now i've got the liquid here from the boiler now this it tastes really intense uh, it's sort of like an espresso coffee maybe potentially even more 
even maybe even slightly more aromatic. Obviously, there's a lot of alcohol in there. So, um, you know, I think it's a really interesting process. I'd be really keen to try this on something like hops. Like, let's say I've got hop flowers and want to extract the hops out of it or something like that. It'd be kind of cool. Um, one thing I will say is this is probably a little bit um, watered down due to the amount of alcohol I had in the boiler. But one other thing you can do at the end of the Soxlet distillation process is once I've got all those flavors and alcohol in the boiler, I can also uh, essentially boil that and boil some of the alcohol off to make it more concentrated. And that's also a fairly fast process if you wanted to make this tincture in the boiler even more concentrated. Anyway, look, that's it. That's the Soxlet distillation process. I'm super keen to try this on a few other things. If you've got anything else that you want to comment about the Soxlet distillation process, put it in the comments below. Maybe you want to request us to do a particular extraction process in this unit. Um, I'd be more than happy to give it a crack, and if it works well, I'll put it in another video as well. Anyway, that's it. If you guys, please sign up to our Facebook Home Brewery community group with guys like yourself sharing tips and tricks on how to use all this type of gear. And please, bottom right hand corner, subscribe to the channel. If you can do that now, I'd really appreciate it. it helps us make a lot more content for you like this. All right, that's it, and see you guys next time. Bye.